Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Alright, so don't you guys worry. We're almost done. Okay, so... Alright, so going back with our solutions on the uh, last number of the Kirchhoff's law. So are we clear so far regarding with the number three? Well, I guess this one is uh, super easy. Hello? All right, so any questions so far regarding with the number one? Two and three on the case of slot. Well, I'm not sure. All right. Okay, so the next one is the Maxwell. Okay, so actually, most of you got this one correctly. So I guess uh, no problem with this one. So almost all of you are uh, uh, perfected this one. So 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, uh, 70, yeah. So there are others who wasn't able to uh, get this one. However, most of you got this one correctly. So see, still uh, 70. So maybe uh, out of 26, there are five or uh, yeah, five more or less who, who wasn't able to get the uh, quiz on Maxwell. Anyway, so the solution for this one is actually we only have two possible solutions. Okay, so it's already in your, uh, call this one, notes, okay, on the uh, Maxwell notes. So here's the first possibility. Let me just uh, take this one, this uh, blank. So this one is super the same. Okay, with your uh, quiz on the Maxwell. So in here, so for sure, you're going to have, oops, you're going to have this. Uh, kind of uh, current, since we have here positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Then of course, positive, negative right here, and then positive, negative. Okay, that is for the uh, loop number one. For the loop number two right here, so we don't know if, if it's uh, conventional or the, uh, they call this one, the uh, counterclockwise. Okay, flow of current. But for sure, on the last one, okay, on the third loop, we have this flow of current. So positive, negative, positive, negative, and then positive, negative. And negative, positive. So depending on who's going to dominate this loop number two. Okay, so loop number one and three is no problem. Okay, so it's already fixed. Okay, however, uh, there will be a change if we wasn't able to get the correct flow of current on the uh, loop number two. Okay, so in this case, we have to separate the two. Okay, you have to know the uh, potential voltage on, let's say this is your node A, and then the potential voltage on the node B. Okay, so if uh, this one is higher, then we have a flow of current of uh, this one, okay, so uh, clockwise. However, if this one is higher, okay, your uh, voltage source in B, okay, or the potential voltage at node B, then we have this flow of current, All right? So those are the uh, only possible ways on how to solve this one, okay? So for you to be able to know the final uh, uh, direction or flow of current on the uh, loop number two. So you have to separate uh, the first two loops. I mean the uh, 
yeah, the first two loop, the uh, loop number one and then the loop number three. So considering this one, okay, considering uh, this one for now, okay, let's just say that we don't have, uh, okay, let me separate this one. Let's just say that we don't have that one. We only have this kind of uh, circuit, a series connection. So in here, uh, we could have the uh, total resistance in series. So R1, let's say this is R2. Oops, R2. R1 plus R2. So uh, the one that you need to get first is the total current. So I total is equal to V total divided by the R total. So V total is already given. Okay. Right here. So EA is 120 volts and uh, R1 is 1.5. So it's the same with R3. And RA is 21 ohms. So 21 right here and 1.5 ohms on the R1. So from here, we already have the B total, which is 120, I guess. So EA is yeah 120 volts, and the R total is of course just add those two resistances the are in series. So 21 plus 1.5 is equal to 22.5. So 120, 120 divided by 22.5. So it will give you a current or a total current of 5.33. And for you to be able to get the uh, potential voltage at node A, okay, so you should get the voltage drop across this R1, okay, so VR1 is equal to uh, I1 times R1, all right, which is equal to, so I1 is equal to uh, I total, which is 5.33, and R1 is 1.5. So 5.33 times 1.5. So this will give you a voltage drop of 7.995, okay? So 120 volts, so this is 120 minus 7.995. So this will give you a potential voltage of minus 7.995. So this will give you a potential voltage at node A of 112.005, okay? So this is our voltage A. It was cut. Mamalitang space, lakihin natin. There you go. Oops. All right, so that is for the uh, potential voltage at node A. We have 112.005 volts. Okay, and then for the node B, so same process. So all you need to do is just get uh, this part only. There you go. Okay, and just separate this one for now. All right. So are you guys still there? Are you guys still listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so for you to be able to get the uh, potential voltage at node B, so the same process is get the uh, I total. I total. Okay, this is equal to V total divided by R total. So in here, V total is equal to which is E sub B, 105, and R B is 6, and R3 is 1.5. Okay, so 105 right here, and 6 right here, and then 1.5, is it? R4, let me check. R3 is 
sorry, this is not six. So they just have different uh, labels or meanings. So this is uh, R3, okay? And this is RB. Okay, so I'll just put that one to avoid confusion. And this one, RB right here is six. So this is the six one. All right, so V total is 105 divided by R total is equal to 6 plus 1.5 since they are in series. So it will give you 7.5. So equals, so the I total is 105 divided by 7.5 will give you 14, 14 amps. Okay, so for you to be able to get the voltage drop across R3, so VR3 is equal to I3 times R3, wherein I3 is equal to I total, which is 14 amps, times R3, which is 1.5 ohms. So 14 times 1.5 is 21, I guess. Times 1.5, yeah, 21. Okay, and right here, this is your voltage drop across uh, R3. So to get the potential uh, voltage at VB, so uh, total voltage, which is 105, minus the voltage drop across this R3, which is 21. Okay, so 105 minus 21 will give you 84. Okay, now, now that you already have the voltage drop, I mean, uh, vol potential voltage on the node A and node B, then you should now compare them. All right, so in here we have 112.005 and then in here we have 84 volts. So uh, knowing that one, we've learned that uh, node A has a higher uh, potential voltage wherein it will dominate the flow of current. Okay, so how will I put this one back? Okay, so but the magic of control Z. It's limited. Anyway, so let me just get this one again. So are you guys still there? It's, uh... All right. So in here, we have this flow of current for the loop one. Right here, we have this flow of current uh, on loop two, I mean loop three. And then for the loop number two, since this one has a higher voltage, okay, potential voltage, then uh, the flow of current should be uh, coming from this node and going right here, okay? So uh, in here, we could assume that we have this flow of current, okay? Uh, clockwise, okay? So it's not counter clockwise. So from here we could already put uh, we can uh, we can already put some labels, but to make our life easier, okay. So we already have uh, that one, which is this one. So I will just change some uh, flow of current in here. So in here, we have this flow of current, this flow of current, but in here, we have current right here, which is going through there, All right? Loop one, two, and three, okay? So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and right here, we have positive, negative, because we have this flow of positive, negative, all right? So from there, you can already uh, get the uh, equations from our uh, loop number one, two, and three, okay? So if you're going to do those, then you will have this kind of equation. So this is uh, an answer from Miss Michael. Okay. Then you put nothing here.
All right. So from here, if you're going to take a look at this one, uh, uh, this is the correct uh, signage when it comes to loop one, loop two, and loop three. So positive 120 minus 1.5. So the value of R1 is 1.5. 1.5, so 1 is RA, so 1 is RB, uh, BA, VB, BA, VB, R3, R1, R2, right here, and then R3. This one is B. R A R B R one R two R three. There you go. Okay, para mas clear. Okay, so from here we have positive one twenty. Okay, minus I sub one times one point five. Okay, minus uh, I sub two. Is this I sub two or I sub three? I sub I sub 1, I sub 2. May I sub A ba? I think merong I sub A eh. Yeah, meron niya. Ibalikan natin. Oops. Uh, I1, I2, I3. I A, I B. Ah, I see. So, my bad. So, still uh, uh, I1 and I2. I1 and I2. This I1, I2, I3. I1, I2, I3. I1, I2, I3. There you go. So sorry for that. Uh, our diagram now is quite messy, but uh, this is our I1. Okay, still I1. And then this is our I2. Okay, and then still I2 in here. And then this is our I3 and uh, RB now in here. Okay, and then this is uh, RA, which is uh, the same with uh, uh, the part of I1. Anyway, so going back to the loop one, so one positive 120 minus uh, I1 times 1.5 minus I sub two, I sub one rather. I sub one, Okay, times uh, RA. RA is, alimutan ko, RA is 21, RB is 6. 21 and 6. So we have 21 here and then 6 right here. So I1 times 21. All right? Ah, sorry. So since this is already uh, in Maxwell, Okay, so you have to consider now the value of the, I mean the uh, current that is flowing on the other side. Okay, so we have uh, a current that is uh, flowing on the uh, RA or node one, which is the I1 and uh, I sub two. All right, so in here, we have to change this one to what is the value of this one? 21. 21 times uh, I sub 1 minus I sub 2 is equal to 0. Okay. So this is our equation number 1. And then just simplify this one and then you will get 120 minus 22.5 I1 plus 21 I2. Okay. So just distribute this one uh, on this I1 and I2. All right. And the same with the uh, loop number two. So just follow uh, the, let's say, uh, signs or polarities, and then you will get this one. 21I1 minus 3I sub 2 plus 6I sub 3. The same with the uh, loop number three. You will get uh, 6I2 minus 7.5I3 minus 105. All right. So I will leave the verification part into you guys since nandito naman na. Okay. So the same process lang siya ng uh, loop number one. So you can also apply that one on loop number two. Okay. So positive 21 uh, plus 
uh, I1 minus I2, etc., etc. All right. So once you already have, so once you already have the uh, three equations, so you can perform this one. So uh, you can uh, use equation one and two to eliminate uh, one variable, okay, which is the I sub two. So this is the, uh, the newly formed equation, which is the uh, equation number four. And you can also uh, use uh, equation number two and three to eliminate the uh, I sub two, okay? So from here, uh, it will leave you I sub one and I sub three. And then you can now use equation number four and five, okay, to combine and eliminate one uh, variable. So in here, uh, uh, you find the common denominator, okay, or uh, you find a divider, okay, for uh, for him or her to reduce this one into three, okay. So we have a lot of ways for you to be able to identify which one you're going to eliminate, but in here he views uh, this divisor one divided by seven. So he divided everything by seven, and then the second equation is multiplied by three divided divided by 13, okay? So uh, you can uh, do this one, so it's okay. And actually, I, I much, much prefer this one. However, Hello, but anyway, Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes, okay. sir. So, palit tayo ng mic. Anyway, so from here, you can actually already use the equation number four and five, okay, for you to use that one as your equations, okay, to solve the two unknowns on your calculator. So, I will accept that one, okay. So as long as you uh, showed me the correct equations, loop one, two, and three, and then the, uh, let's say eliminating uh, one variable, let's say you now only have two uh, remaining equation, which is equation number four and five, then yeah, uh, I will accept that one for you to be able to get the uh, missing variables, the IA, uh, I mean I1, I2, I3, all right? But if you can still proceed and then find a, a common ground where you can eliminate one of the variable, which is let's say I1 or I3, then uh, better. Wherein uh, Miss Michael come up with this uh, kind of solution. So very good, Miss Michael. So just eliminating I sub one, it will give you this kind of equation. So uh, multiply both sides by uh, 26 divided by 75. And yeah, just by transfer this one, 26 times negative 375, and uh, 75 times 13, it will give you negative 10 times, okay? So uh, things now will become uh, much easier since we already have the I sub D. So you can now use this one to substitute that one on the equation five for you to be able to get the I1. And you now have the I1 and uh, I3, then you can now, or Actually, you can just use uh, I3 okay, or I1 to substitute it on uh, either of those equations to find the uh, I sub 3. So in here, she substituted the value of I sub 3 on the equation number 3. And then you've got I sub 2 is equal to 5 amps. All right? And once you already have that one, then you can now perform KCL on each node. So IA, so going back to the... Uh, messy. So not a time messy equation. Anyway, so we have here uh, this uh, I1, okay, I1, let's say node A, I1 minus I2 minus uh, I8 is equal to zero. So this is your equation number one on node, uh, at node A. And then the next one at node B, so we have here positive I sub three 
minus IB and positive I sub B. Okay. So this is again another equation. So since you already have your I sub 1, I sub 2, I sub 3, so uh, substituting the value of I1 and I2 in the first equation, then you'll be able to get the I sub B already. Okay, so the same with this one, you already have the I3 and I2, then uh, you'll be able to solve for the I sub B already. Okay. Where is that one? So that's it for the I sub A and I sub B. And for the power across A and power across B, so uh, as long as you have the uh, value of I A and I B, then you can uh, perform this equation. B is equal to I squared times R. Okay, so I A is five, so five squared times uh, the resistance across it, which is 21. So, 5 squared is 25 times 21 is yeah, equal to 525 volts. So the same with the PB. Okay, so 15 squared times 6 will give you 1,350 volts. All right. So, yeah, that's how you answer uh, this question. So, okay. Using Maxwell theorem. Uh, Right. So, any questions or clarification so far? Hello. None, sir. Okay. So, congratulate yourself since uh, matiaga kayong. Uh, nakinig sa mga sinasabi ko. Even though uh, I, I guess uh, all of you have already uh, got this one uh, correctly. So actually pwede na kayong umalis kung maintindihan nyo na yung uh, Maxwell. But anyway, so thank you uh, Miss Michael, Mr. Alf, uh, Salvalion, and Mr. Aaron, and Mr. Uh, Angabang. Right, so thank I you in there, sir. So next meeting, uh, we will start our discussion with Devinins and uh, Norton. Okay. So they are just a uh, short uh, uh, theorem. So similar sila sa superposition and nodal. It's not that long. It's not that complicated. Uh, yeah. So just the process. As long as you know the process, then you'll be able to apply uh, those theorems. Anyway, so... Yeah, that's it for the solutions on the Kirchhoff's uh, quiz and Maxwell's quiz. So, do you guys have a question so far? Okay. Sure. All right, so I guess that's it. So, again, thank you and see you guys next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Bye, sir. Bye.